Using a clock in Cordis is fairly straightforward. In your system DE2 module, declare the clock50 input port, and you can connect that to an input port in your system module. Clock50 is a clock with a period of 50 MHz. It outputs a 1-bit wire that goes from 1 to 0 and back to 1 50 million times every second. As you've learned in class, you want flip-flops and registers to change in synchrony with the positive edge of the clock when it changes from 0 to 1. The syntax for a flip-flop module in Quartus is quite simple. It should take the clock as an input, as well as the write data, and should have the stored value as an output port. We're going to use an always block for this, so you need the reg keyword on the output port. Create an always block and put pause edge clock in the sensitivity list. This ensures that the contents of the always block will execute synchronously with the clock period. The most basic flip-flop just assigns the value of the input to the output. Notice the use of the non-blocking assignment operator. Remember to use this operator in always blocks so that you can reuse registers within the always block. A more robust flip-flop would include a reset and an enable input. You would also need to change the assignment conditions within the always block, but the role of the clock would remain the same. Likewise, when you learn about controllers later in the course, you'll see that the clock works the same way for them, just as a pause edge in the sensitivity list of an always block. The other thing to know about clocks is that you have to treat them a little differently in your test bench. You want the clock to be simulated accurately, so you need to base it off of the clock model sim uses for the simulation. You want to make an always block in which you negate the value of the clock register and proceed it by a hash 5 or some other number. This means that the clock value will flip every 5 model sim clock cycles, and so the period of your simulated clock will be 10 model sim clock cycles. You should have the wait times in your initial block be a multiple of the simulated clock period, so that your input changes line up with the positive edges. Also, you need to initialize your clock to zero in the initial block, or else its value will always be undefined. Now let's look at the waveform. You can see that the clock does indeed change every 5 nanoseconds with the positive edge occurring every 10 nanoseconds. The value of in changes on the negative edges, which makes sense because the clock starts at zero. This is what you want because it ensures that the input changes well before the next positive edge, and the value of out changes only on the positive edge, as we'd expect. Notice the red line at the beginning of the out waveform. Remember that red lines indicate an uninitialized value. In this case, out is initialized at the very first positive edge of the clock, and nothing depends on its value beforehand, so the initial indeterminacy isn't a concern at all.